my research focus on analyzing the contractual characteristics of corporate credit in Mexico. And for doing the research, I'd like to introduce a matching framework. What this approach is about, what this presentation is about, is to introduce an assignment model with two-sided search to analyze the incentives of matching in the credit market. In 1995, we have a crisis, a huge crisis. This, the worst financial crisis in Mexican history. And what this figure is showing is the tragic of the banking system in Mexico. In 1995, starting 1995, the total portfolio that the banking system has lent at the market was almost 50% of the GDP. Then suddenly, we have a huge contraction in the banking activity. This huge contraction lasts since 1995 to 2000, and then starts to stabilize by 2001. From 2006 to 2007, the banking activity increased almost in 5% of the GDP for the total credit, and almost in 3% for the corporate credit. The increase in banking activity, measured by the number of branches and the personnel, if we take uh, the first quarter of 2000 as the basis, shows a huge increase also for the last period 2006 and 2007. If we analyze the total corporate credit lines at the market, we will see that the number of lines, open lines at the market, increased also dramatically starting in 2006. The new contracts per month, which is a better measure of banking activity, also shows this increase starting in 2006. So, what is going on? What we observe in the data is that the typical contract's loan size is going down and the associated interest rate is going up. What this research does is to analyze a basic matching game with transfer of utility. So what I'm going to introduce is a framework that has been very useful for analyzing another assortative relationships. What the matching model does is to add theoretical content to a previous model, which has the donic price model. What the matching mechanism does is to first define the incentives of the agents, what they are doing. Second, the decision-making environment, given the information they have. Third, given these two interactions, how these guys assign them between themselves, and what is the exchange equilibrium fr from this optimal interaction. In our framework, we are going to have supply and demand for something we call credit, but usually it's just resources. And what we are going to trade is a certain level of resources or capital, and we are going to allow them to bargain over the interest rate they are paying. So the intermediaries are agents with the capacity to collect resources and put them into the market at a different cost. This cost function is going to be different only by the technology, and the assumption we are going to make is that better banks have lower marginal cost. What are the entrepreneurs? Well, these guys are the lucky ones who have an idea. The idea has different scales. Some guys have a very good idea, some guys have a not very good idea. So basically, the talent is indeed the scale of the project. All of the entrepreneurs and all of the banks are looking simultaneously for the best uh, client or best assortative relationship. So we are going to define a stable outcome under very elementary conditions. When we are just matching in one variable, we can uh, prove that this is stable condition, by identifying the stable condition, the equilibrium implied by this stable condition, which is an interest rate and allocation, is optimal, efficient, unique, positive assortative under the framework of marginal cost decreasing, and pure. What this row is allowing me to do is to have identification of the solution of the, of the prices, which is the interest rate. If we have this row lo lower than one, that means that we have more entrepreneurs than banks in terms of the density 
then the solution of the model will be given by this four equation. Let us introduce an exogenous change in Rome, which is what I observed in, in Mexico. Suddenly, starting 2006, the banking activity increases. What is important is that the critical value, which is the last entrepreneur in getting credit, goes down. So the whole matching function modifies. Why? Well, because you have more guys able to provide resources at the market, more entrepreneurs are able to get credit, how much more? All of these guys. The structure of the databases allow us to do this kind of exercise. So we have the extensive margin of firms and the intensive margin of credit for firms and banks in terms of the number of transactions, as David said, and the interest rate and the capital at the credit transaction. The data analysis shows the following. First of all, there is an increase in the number of transactions for corporate credit. The median credit size is going down. Loan sizes are focusing toward small credit size in time. The low type desire is also falling. The median interest rate seems to be going up, right? And the dispersion of the interest rate, right, seems to be also spreading in the market. Relative high credit is getting credit at a lower interest rate, in equilibrium. Unfortunately, so far I cannot go deeper into the analysis of the branch of the bank. But at least at the bank level, it seems to be consistent that different banks are attending different clients with implications that the model would predict in terms of size and interest rate. The credit is increasing for all the firms, but it's focusing toward small size firms. We found from the data an increase in the creation of corporate credit, measured by number of contracts, or total portfolio, as low movement of credit loan size and distribution toward relative low credit. So we have a mass in low relative credit, a higher concentration of contracts on higher levels of interest rate, because the whole distribution is moving up. Uh, we have evidence of the negative relationship between credit size and interest rate, but also difference about the banks and the typical client measured by the medium client uh, in terms of credit sizes and interest rates and the negative relationship preserves. Finally, it seems to be obvious from the data that small service firms and manufacturer firms are the ones who are having higher credit at the market. Using the theoretical expansion of the financial system exogenous as it is right now with a very simple framework, the model indeed predicts the observed effects of the distribution of credit size and interest rate in terms of new participants. Okay? So the model does well on that. The model also projects a, neg a negative relationship of credit size and interest rate as the larger firms gives, uh, get credit from the best banks and are having a higher share of their profits or the surplus they create. Also, the proposed framework predicts a specialization of banks toward certain types of clients in terms of bank's efficiency, not size, but efficiency. We need to be measured so far. Also, uh, the model explains consistently the higher concentration of credit toward low size firms, which are the new entrants in the in economy, right? Finally, what the model explains is the matching between banks or financial intermediaries and clients, but it does not provide an explanation for the extensive margin of number of contracts attended by banks, which is the number of contracts by banks. But what I wanted to prove you today is that with a very basic, simple framework, we can go a lot way, a long way.